Tributes are pouring in for the late former Zambian president, uh, Kenneth Kaunda. The elderly statesman died aged 97 at a hospital in Lusaka. Kaunda was Zambia's first democratically elected president post-independence from Britain. His family has expressed thanks for the prayers and support since his hospitalization last week. His son, uh, Kachewe, says that whilst others will remember his father for his role in liberating his own country as well as others, his legacy lies in his dedication to humanism. We're now joined by veteran Zambian journalist uh, Maureen Nkandu, who some of you may remember her on our screens here in South Africa, as she spent a good number of years as a colleague, as an SABC news journalist as well. Maureen, thanks very much indeed for joining us as uh, somebody who was born into the Kaunda era and uh, worked um, during uh, his presidency. Uh, this must be a difficult time for you and Zambians generally. Yes, uh, no doubt about it. We are absolutely distraught at this news. Of course, um, an elderly statesman of his age, he was frail. We knew that this would come one day. But, you know, just like it was in South Africa with former President Nelson Mandela, I think we all selfishly just wanted him to be there forever because of um, the stature that he carried and, um, you know, his legacy as well in the country. So obviously a lot of people are devastated. I'm particularly uh, feeling very bad about this because I met Dr. Kaunda when I was a very young journalist. I interviewed him a lot of times, in fact, some, on some occasions for the SABC when I worked for the SABC uh, covering African news. And um, also just spent a number of uh, times and occasions with him. I've written extensively about my journalistic encounters with the former president and some of the things that um, he mentioned and spoke about, um, about his legacy and his, his reflections on his political career. So it's really a time of reflection. It's a time to mourn naturally um, it's because it's very sad, but it's also a time for us to celebrate the greatness of this great giant of Africa. And it's, it's quite a story to tell. Somebody who has lived for so long and has been part of so much history. Um, but as you look back and perhaps putting on your journalist hat and also uh, maybe personal uh, uh, thoughts, um, what would you say is the story of uh, uh, KK? Well, Dr. Kaunda's story is a very interesting one. Obviously, soon after independence from Britain in 1964, he was a very popular leader. He was seen as among the great giants because, you know, the wind of, um, um, of independence, of emancipation was blowing throughout Africa from uh, Ghana's Kwame Nkrumah. And so he was really revered by Zambians and others, especially in Southern Africa. But then things started changing in the mid 1970s when um, he banned other political parties and uh, UNIP, the United National Independence Party became the only party that was governing. Um, dissent and criticism was obviously silenced and um, also owing to the political um, dispensation that that time, in that case, because Zambia, although it was a non-aligned state, was actually more aligned towards the Eastern Bloc that time of the USSR, which is now Russia and China and so on. He nationalized the economy. And so as a young journalist, for me, I joined ZNBC at the time of the one party rule. It was ZNBC being the equivalent of the SABC. And um, as a public, or well, it was a state broadcaster, we had to toe the line. The story was about one political party and that was all that was there in the country. Of course, things started changing. One important aspect that I need to mention here is that Dr. Kaunda played a significant role in uh, the liberation of countries in uh, Southern Africa. As you know, the African National Congress was hosted in Zambia at some time, as was Swapo of Namibia. And um, even at some point, um, Samora Michelle, the late Samora Michelle of Mozambique, as well as Zapu of uh, Joshua Nkomo in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, Dr. Kaunda's uh, actual, his motto, his mantra was, Zambia cannot be free 
if the rest of Southern Africa is not free. So he dedicated a lot of his foreign policy, his military strategies and so on, to ensuring that, um, you know, South Africa apartheid ended in South Africa. And before that, it was the liberation of uh, Zimbabwe, which was uh, Southern Rhodesia at that time, uh, Namibia and so on. Um, so that, that is an important legacy for which is highly respected throughout the world. In Zambia itself, another very significant aspect is how he managed to unite a country of more than 73 tribes. There was absolute unity. Um, people did not know what the tribe of their next door neighbor was for many, many years because he did a lot of tribal balancing in his government. We were just raised not to worry or care about what tribe the next person was. And this united the country. He had a motto called One Zambia, One Nation. And um, I think for that reason, there was a lot of, of peace and stability. Yes, and you know, when we uh, look back on somebody's uh, legacy, um, uh, we always try to remember the good bits, but he did have challenges, the economy, and uh, also perhaps uh, at a time when uh, people were looking for a new kind of democracy and crying for multi-party uh, 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 democracy, he was trying to hold on to power, wasn't he? Well, to a certain extent he was. As you know, he governed for 27 years, um, but the force was very strong. The movement for pluralism was really growing, uh, not only in Zambia, but as you know, that was the time of the wind of change in Eastern Europe, with USSR fragmenting and um, Eastern Europe, the Iron Curtain coming down in countries like Romania and so on. So there was a strong sense of multi-party politics blowing, and I don't think Dr. Kaunda had much of a choice, so his party UNIP, mm. because um, the pressure was high, but also the economy was doing bad. As I said, um, he nationalized every aspect of industry and enterprise, and that also meant that um, the economy was not, it was not as diverse as um, in other countries like Kenya or Nigeria, for instance, because uh, everything was centered around copper. And so copper prices uh, were not doing very well. And you found that there were food shortages in the country and things were actually beginning to de deteriorate a lot, which actually forced a lot of political agitation in the country. And we saw the onset of the movement for multi-party democracy, which was made up of some former members of UNIP who felt that it was now time for a change. And also with uh, the West, the Eastern Bloc, which had supported uh, countries like Zambia, fragmenting and weakening, it meant that um, the, you know, the support that he was getting from these countries could not uh, sustain his, his stay in power in that sense. So obviously things had to change when we had elections in 1991, where he was defeated by former president uh, Frederick Chiruba's MMD party. All right. And people who came into contact with him will remember him uh, as a very charming uh, presence. Um, uh, he almost filled the room quite a bit just by being there. And uh, still, when he was uh, a bit younger and, and into his uh, early sort of older years, he'd always run up onto the stage and uh, be quite active. And he wanted to be seen that way um, uh, through his life. Healthy living. I think he was a vegetarian as well. Um, so there was a very human side to him, wasn't there? Oh, yes, he was a larger than life person. I mean, he loved singing, for instance. Um, I remember every time I interviewed him, he would take, us, take out his guitar and he would say, Young Maureen, he nicknamed me Young Maureen because um, of the, obviously, my having started, started my journalism career at a very early age. And he would say, I'm going to sing that song for you. And then he would uh, strut, out, strut out his guitar and then explain what that song meant. His famous one, obviously, was Tien de Pamozi, which means let us be united and work together with one heart. Um, he led a very healthy lifestyle. Of course, as you say, he was vegetarian. And um, he was also a very strong advocate of um, a champion of, uh, of AIDS, ensuring that communities understood and were empowered with information around prevention of HIV and AIDS. And this picked up, especially after he lost one of his sons uh, to the disease. But yes, Dr. Kaunda was a likable figure. Um, especially years after he left the presidency, I think um, people 
people started reflecting on his rule. Um, some of us who were much older, who are much older, of course, and <laughs> you know, had the opportunity to live and experience things like free education, good health facilities in his days. We all started looking back at, at, at his legacy. Um, and yeah, very pre a friendly, personable uh, man, larger than life. You'd feel his presence. He had a very contagious laughter. And, and I think very welcoming. One of the things that we noticed in the last few months was a lot of people visiting him and taking photographs with him. And I think he enjoyed that. He loved young children. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was an 18 year old reporter working for television in Zambia, that was my first assignment as a reporter. I went to State House. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing there. I'd just gone on, you know, as, a, as, a, as an intern. And he showed me the ropes. He said, take out your notebook, take out your pen. I want you to take down notes. Come and sit in front here. I want to see you write down the notes. And so he was always very sort of down to earth. At one time, I even ate off his plate and drank what he called presidential wine, which was actually a blend of berries and honey. So he was quite a very likable person. I mean, Dr. Kawanda was to Zambia as Nelson Mandela was to South Africa. And I think that um, a lot of people have been saying here in Zambia now that, you know, we after we lost Mandela, we were, of course, very sad, but we felt a bit comforted that we still had Kaunda. Now, this giant tree has also fallen and we are all feeling quite fatherless, to be honest.